G'day everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad and thanks for tuning in to another episode. Well, slight change of pace today, we're doing some freshwater fishing and as you can see behind me, we are at Pikes Creek Reservoir, which is a family friendly fishing destination. It's got some great on-site amenities here. The best thing is though, it's only 50 minutes from the heart of Melbourne, which means you don't need to go and travel hours and hours and hours to target some of those really cool freshwater species. Now thanks to a lot of hard work from your key fishing bodies over the years. There's lots of different species that you can target here. Trout probably being your primary species. You've got redfin, you've got Murray cod, you've got yellow belly. You've even got some big slabs of carp that you can target here if you want. It's a really nice place, really scenic and quite surprising. So today I'm going to be fishing with my good mate Mick. He's going to be in his tinny. We've got the electric motor and we've definitely got trout on our minds. Who knows, we might tangle with some other things, but that is our primary species. We're going to be running through a whole heap of tips and techniques to share with you and hopefully catch a few cracking fish to make this another awesome episode. Anyway guys, as always, I appreciate your company. I thank you for tuning in. Sit back, enjoy the show and let's get fishing. The net's just next to you too. Yep. Oh, it's only a little one, is it? Yeah, it's only a little one, but geez, they're flighty. They get a lot of aerial action. And he's thrashing about. Obviously, you get lots of browns and rainbows in here, but majority of them have been brown. I think this is another little brown. So oh, that goes in. Oh, nice. There you go. Alright, done, mate. Right, there we go. Alrighty. So not a big fish. What a beautiful fish. So obviously you get those stunning colours and spots on these fish. And every trout's a little bit unique because obviously those patterns are, are very different. And as you can see there, the Tassie Devil once again has done really well. And definitely using these single twin assist hooks have been really, really good in terms of hookup rates. Now this obviously isn't a big fish, so this is probably a, a little yearling or something that was stocked in the last year or two. Beautiful fish. Obviously we want to get these guys back in the water ASAP, so that way he can grow to be one of those big trophy trout that you might catch in a few years time. So this beautiful little brown trout back in the water and on his day, and hopefully we can find an upgrade. So let's get him back in the water right now. And uh, I can tell you that it is only about four degrees out here, so it's freezing. <laughs> so, uh, so the hands are going to be nice and cold. But if you come right over to the side, Mick, yeah. you get this beautiful fish. All right, he's going to be go. on his way. Look he's at that. Off. Oh, look at that. Cold fingers. And look at that. He's just sort of sitting there. It's gone. In the water column. Good job. Absolutely awesome. Alright guys, so it's pretty straightforward when you're in Pikes Creek Reservoir with electric motor. I'll find a target that I want the boat to navigate to and I'll just set it on a GPS lock or just follow that course. That ridge line on that uh, hill looks good. I'll set the speed I want. Then all I'll simply do is the boat's going exactly where I want it to go. Pass the devil out the back. And then I'll just sit it. So basically it's flat lines. And then I just want to watch that rod tip. And you can see on the old uh, Daiwa trauma set, it's just shaking a bit like that. And then I'll just keep going and eventually it'll load up. And once it loads up and we've found trout in a particular area, we'll just use our uh, GPS and we'll just make sure we go over that line again. And we'll just keep searching, just running, prospecting really, just running lines, hoping we find a fish on that line. I want, we're on mate, well done. And we might need to get your... Yeah, it's okay. This over here. 
Yeah. I'll get him on anyway because oh, we'll. He's a... No, he's a nice fish. Look at this. Where's he gone? There we go. There's yeah. a nice, nice little brown. We want to get a good look at him. Well done, mate. Well done. It's a nice, nice little assist hook. As you can see, just goes straight out. Nice yeah. little brown. Oh, but you can see that, look at that. And then you'll see the survival rate. Watch this. Gently put him back in there. Thanks for coming along. Away he goes. Off. Nice job, mate. So what are we? We're trawling at 2.8 k's, are we? We're, we're, we're keeping it between 3.4 and 2.8. We're finding it at the three kilometre mark. Even yep. though historically they might say it's too fast. Yeah. It's working for us. No, that's perfect. All right, so as you can... So as you can see, all the... Oh, 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 we're on, right on cue. <laughs> I was just showing the rod tip then, thinking I'll um, get a bit clever. It's only a small one. It's a very small one, actually. As I say, I might be able to just lift this one up. That's a, that's a nice one. It's a nice fish, actually. That's a cracker. Look at that there. So there is another beautiful little brown trout. Um, it was funny, I was just showing the TD Commander in the water, and what I was going to say is, it's a pretty simple technique. We basically just put that fishing rod in the rod holder, um, having a good chat to Mick then, and he said, really, we've been moving at speeds of between 2.8 and 3.4 kilometers. That's kind of been the optimal speed where we're getting really good action on those light rod tips. And again, as I've said plenty of times, look at the beautiful colors and patterns of these fish. Brown trout, one of my favorite freshwater fish. Yep. And uh, let's get this one in the water as well. He's ready to go, this one. He's absolutely raring his. So I think he will be on his way. And anyway, he swims. Look at that. Just into the current. There he goes. All right, so there you can see that is what I'm catching them in on, guys. So that is a 13.5 gram Tassie Devil. Really, really like the bright colors. So pinks, whites, and as you can see, what we have done is we have modified that. So you've got the twin single Winston hooks there. So they're size twos and they're twin single hooks and the hookup rates are exceptional when you do that. So that's a great setup and uh, hopefully we'll get us a few more trout. Now, Pikes Creek was one of 220 waterways across Victoria stocked with 10 million fish alone last season. And if you look behind me at Pikes Creek, this year alone in 2022, that is 20,000 trout yearlings, 10,000 Murray cod, and 10,000 golden perch. That is a portion of your fishing fees at hard work right there. It's all part of the state government's Go Fishing Victoria scheme. And you know what? I think that's pretty damn good. about my lines just yeah oh got some weight eh uh, it's, it's not like a cracker that was yesterday jeez and we just dropped my one and your oh, lines so. oh good job man that's okay but again those assist hooks Oh, is it right? Oh, it's brown. That's a brown. Oh, it's off oh, the hook to come out. Nice little brown tree out of Pikes Creek Reservoir. Got Tassie Devil on the trail, nice pink one. Uh, what I might do, so I'm going to show you guys, I don't muck around with them, so the, the assist hooks are really good to come. Go for it. There you go. He's off. Oh, he fired up. Like a rocket. Yeah. Nice job, mate. Cheers. Oh, so that's a huge wedge tail eagle. That's a beautiful bird. So graceful, aren't they? Even though he's just scouring the fields to find a rabbit to pick off or something. But... Let me run you through the setup that we're going to be using today. And all we're going to be doing is we're going to be trawling a lot of your slow sinking lures at the back of the boat. We've got the electric motor, which I'll run through shortly, which is a little bit of a game changer in what we're doing today. 
I've just got a very cheap entry level rod here. Believe it or not, this rod actually only cost me $20. Um, it's got a very entry level reel on here. The thing that got my attention was it's got this full EVA handle section, and that's really great when you're putting your rod into the rod holder. And obviously because it's white, it's really nice and high vis because what you're gonna find is sometimes you'll be trawling around, maybe for five minutes, sometimes for hours. And to have something just at the corner of your eye that's really high vis that you get to see those little buckles when you get nibbles from trout is actually really important. So this is a seven foot, three to five kilo rod. I've got that paired with a 2500 size reel and that on it has got 10 pound braid. And then what I've done is I've run two fishing rod lengths of 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I think that's really helpful when you're trawling just because that fluorocarbon leader is low vis and just having a longer length can be really, really handy when you're trawling. As we are trawling slow sinking lures, things that come to mind automatically are things like these, your Tassie Devils, nice bright colors. So your pinks and your whites and your oranges, even some of your shallow diving hard body lures. So things like your Daiwa double clutches, any minnow that's sort of between that 55 and probably 80 mil length even a lot of your spoons and I'm going to show you what I've got in my tackle box shortly we have got the electric motor for us that is a little bit of a game changer because it allows us to have absolute control and we can have that hold our position or what we can do is we can set that at an exact speed and then we can sit back and watch those rods in the rod holder now historically this lake has had some issues with blue green algae so you really do want to keep an eye on that however amazing stocking over a sustained period of time and it's not just your brown trout or your rainbow trout there's natives in here and there's some really really amazing fish there's great diversity whether you're targeting yourself a redfin a trout a cod maybe even a giant carp if you want to bring your kids along to a place like this target a couple of stock trout you've got parks you've got barbecues you've got good boat launching facilities and when you look at today's circumstances with rising costs everywhere the cost at the moment of fuel and diesel to pack the car and to go for a three or four hour drive that is becoming more costly you know what when you come down to a place like this 45 minutes from Melbourne. You don't need extravagant expensive gear. It's a great place to take the family, it's stocked heavily with fish. It's a great diversity of fish species that you can target here. And don't forget, it's actually pretty scenic as well. Yep. Saw it playing, I'm playing. Okay. I'll wait till you get it closer and then I'll get the net. Jump then. Right, I'm going to come on this side of you now. <clears throat> it's a good fish. Look at the water parting there. I think we're all tangled up too. That's okay, don't worry. I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's not really doing much now, is it? Oh, there it is there. Yeah, it's just there. Oh, will Oh, it's a rainbow. It? Yeah, it's a rainbow. Oh, no, no, no. It's a little rainbow. Now, that sun has come out, but don't be fooled. It is absolutely freezing out here. Oh, I'm actually getting a little tap. Um, so when we hit the water today, it was about three degrees. I've been on the water now for a good hour or so. Uh, I'd say that wind chill factor and the temperature now is probably sitting at about five. It is bitterly freezing. So obviously when you're fishing out in winter, Make sure that you are rugged up so you can still get out there and catch some really good fish. But you really want to make sure you've got adequate clothing to keep yourself comfortable. For me, that's things like a pair of gloves, uh, a face shield. I can tell you now, I've got about four layers here. So from a, a wind protected vest that I've got on, I've got a jumper, I've got three or four other layers on it. Even under here, I've got me pants. I've got another layer of pants on underneath. And that's exactly what you need to do to stay warm. That's already, it feels like. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm jigging the wasabi spoons off the bottom. It's very cold. They're going to be sitting on the bottom and holding the bottom. Let's have a look. I'm going to stand oh, up it's a ready! It's a... Oh, there you go. Cracker. It's a huge one. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we know they're here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You fell hooked it as well. That's yeah. the other thing. It's... preparing your trip to do some trawling in some systems like this obviously you go into your tackle store and the volume of lures that you can buy is almost pretty overwhelming so 
what I generally like to do is just to cover a bit of bases and have a handful of different things. Now, to be honest, me and Mick, we're both using Tassie Devils at the moment. They're a long time trusted thing that just tends to produce results over and over again. I think when you're trawling and motoring at slow speeds, it's that wobbling action, it's the slow sinking rate. So they work exceptionally well. And as I said earlier, your colors like your white, your pinks, and your oranges, your really bright colors, tend to work exceptionally well. Whether that's because it's mimicking something that looks like a rainbow trout, I'm not sure, but over time they've been really good. So you've got things like this, so they're your Tassie Devils. Okay, and as I said, you've got bright pinks, bright oranges, really nice wobbling action, so they work exceptionally well. Then you've got a category that I would call as metal spoons. So this there, that is a Nori's Wasabi spoon, and that is a Pontoon 21 Paco spoon. So they also work really, really well. They're just gonna dart in the water, they're gonna sink a little bit lower. Both got trebles in different sizes. Then you've got shallow diving minnows. So really common things like your diver double clutch. These are just your, some of your standard sort of 60 mil sort of shallow divers. Very small bib, they're only gonna get down to about a meter or two, but they've got that really, really great action because of that bib in the water. You've got slightly deeper diving ones. So that's a diver tournament spike. It's got a bigger bib on it. That's gonna get you down to about two meters. And then you've got surface lures, which are very, very popular. So you've got things like your OSP bent minnow, diver slippery dog, especially when you're going into those more shallower inlets, the surface action, the movement on the top, trout will happily go and smash one of those off the surface. And don't forget some of your absolute old classics, the old wobblers and things like that. So anything of that nature, and as I said, an old school wobbler is just effective as some of the really cool, fancy and expensive lures that you got today. But for us, we've got a really good range. It allows us when we're on the water to chop and change, to get things to a different depth. We've got different colors. We've got different things uh, really covered when we're on the water. And as I said, those Tassie Devas are a bit of a tried and trusted thing. And I think we'll get a few using those. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we could do that. Oh, is that one there? Oh. That? I'm watching, mate. The white Ooh. light shot, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. That's per that's working. Oh, that's. Oh. See what I mean? Maybe just. Oh. Mm. Did you see that? Is, that? is it? Go um. check that. Oh, Ooh. oh, is that? In the elder, do you have a little ready on there? I don't know, just just patient, I reckon. Oh, it's such a thin rod. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Oh, that, that anchor. Beautiful, so that has stopped the electric. And now we're in position. And we've got a fish. And I'm, oh, I'm oh, oh, I can see. Oh, it's, a, it's a smaller one, it's surfacing. My line's going to get in your way there a bit, Mick, but that's okay. Um, Oh, it's a brown. That's the old faithful pink Tassie Devil. And I like this, the assist hooks down the bottom with just a little bead. And I find with those assist hooks too, because a lot of time when I come here, just recreational fishing and just doing a bit of catch and release. So I find that they don't make a mess of the trout. If you trap really whack those trebles, all three trebles, and get a bit nasty. So I think if, you, if you're not too committed to taking one home, 100% these are the way to go. Got a trout on. Yep. He's thrashing about. May have the lines. No, nah, it's a little brown. Hopefully we don't lose him. Oh, it, yeah, they, they, oh, they wouldn't come out and stock them down there. They would, it would either be, the boat ramp's the most logical thing because. On? Oh, yep. That's about to go off. So there we go. So there is the target species. There's a beautiful brown trout. These are one of the most stunning fish, freshwater fish in Victoria. Just got those beautiful colors. Obviously all the patterns change all the time. And obviously we do care for these fish. It's pure catch and release today. And we want to do our best to get these fish back into the water as soon as possible. So we're going to stop talking and out of respect for these beautiful fish, we're going to get him into the water. So we'll come over the boy. Yep. It is very cold. 
Look at that. What a beautiful fish. And away he goes. He, <laughs> he, right. he really wanted to go. Let's get one more. Well, that's a wrap, everyone, and I hope that you've enjoyed the episode. Well, what a place. What an awesome fishing session. And I think episodes like this are just a friendly reminder that you don't need to travel too far to get out to wonderful places like these, nice and scenic, that hold some really, really awesome fish. And over the years, thanks to lots of work by many wonderful people, there's a whole array of things here that you can target. You can bring the family. And like myself and Mick today, we've had a wonderful day on the water catching some really, really awesome fish. I hope that you've enjoyed this week's episode and I look forward to seeing you on the screen again next week. Take care everyone.